Today we're going to talk about using Google Earth to make a tour. Now let me show you what I'm actually talking about here. Is I've downloaded a tour from this great website, which I'll show you in a second. And I've got a tour of the Aeneid by Virgil. And what some great teacher has done is they've mapped out the route uh, that Odysseus took in the Aeneid um, and used Google Earth to really bring it to life for the students. So we have all of the various places, stops along the way. And in pink here, I can see the actual route that he's taken. If I click on each individual place mark here, it will zoom into that level of detail. So there's all of Europe. Here is the voyage specifically. And now to the good stuff, if I click on Troy, for example, it's going to zoom in to uh, where Troy is, or I'm assuming where we think Troy was. Um, and it actually has this great little model um, that was made in SketchUp um, of Troy. If I click on the blue hyperlink text, I have some information the teacher put in here about Troy, including some links. And that's really true for all the various places um, along the journey. So I can zoom over to Crete. And depending on how quick your internet connection is, um, the detail will sort of render um, as it goes along. It's going a little slower for me since I'm recording um, the screen as I go. So here's Crete. I click on the blue hyperlink and there's some information about Crete. The good news is there are a lot of tours that have been made for us already at this wonderful site called googlelittrips.org. And a lot of the trips are divided into grade level and also to subject by subject matter. And you can see from the dates they're being added all the time. So take a, make sure to take a look at the site and see if some of these tours will work for your class. And consider adding your own tours if you do go ahead and make some of them. The first step in creating a tour is to put down what we call place marks. And think of them exactly how they look as thumbtacks on a map. So I've got made one here in Baltimore uh, for Camden Yard, so I'm going to double, double click on that. And I'm noticing I don't have my 3D buildings layer turned on, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And after a few seconds, the buildings will start to jump into 3D. And I'll point out that these buildings, excuse me, were all made uh, using Google SketchUp. So if I click on the little hyperlink text, you'll see my description that I've created with the place mark. And you'll notice that I have a heading here. I have some text. I have used underline. And I even have a web link. If I click on the web link, it will actually open up a little web browser inside of Google Earth to go to the Orioles website. I'm going to right click on this place mark and go to properties, which is how I actually edit the place mark. And you'll notice that I'm using, it's actually called KML for Keyhole Markup Language, but it's very, very similar to HTML, which we have discussed in class already. In fact, for our purposes, they're basically indistinguishable from each other. You'll notice that the home of the Orioles text, which was my heading, is surrounded by the heading tags. And for all of these tags, there's always going to be a starting tag and an end tag. The end tag has that forward slash um, in the beginning. So everything in between the heading one tags will be a heading. Um, a heading two would be slightly smaller. Heading three would be slightly smaller, um, up to five, I believe. The, you'll notice that the text um, here, which I've copied from Wikipedia, um, is surrounded by a P tag, which is for paragraph. If you want to have any space between uh, your different paragraphs or sentences, it has to be nestled inside of these paragraph tags. So there was a space between this large block of text and this Let's Go O's um, text. Um, and that's because they both have the paragraph tag on each side of them. I've also added the underline tag for Let's Go O's. I want to point out that I have the paragraph tag on the outermost and I have the underline tag inside. There are definitely different layers of the um, tags. I could even go as far as this. I can put the bold tag, which is just B, on both sides of the word O's. And now I have the bold tag for O's, the underline tag for all of Let's Go O's, and the paragraph tag for the whole thing. If I press OK and click on it again, you'll notice that the O's is actually bold. 
and then go back inside. And the last thing, the most complicated part of it was the hyperlink. And basically, you'll probably just have to copy what I've done here, and you'll trade out um, the web address that I have for the web address that you'll be using. And I have the actual URL here. And then this, the Orioles on the web, is actually the text that you see in the hyperlink. So that it says the Orioles on the web, but the hyperlink actually takes you to that website, orioles.com. Now, unfortunately, when I had the video paused, uh, Google Earth crashed on me, and I lost my Camden Yards place mark, um, which is a good way for lead-in for me to explain how to save what you do on Google Earth. So I'm going to go ahead to My Places, and I'm going to right-click and add a new folder. And I'm just going to go ahead and call it JHU Tour Demo. Oops. I'm going to go ahead and minimize the Aeneid. And I have my own, own little folder here. And now before I put that on placemark, I'm going to make sure that I have this folder um, highlighted so that whatever placemark I make will go inside of that folder. I can right-click on that folder and save it wherever I like. Um, and it's a good thing to do every once in a while. Google Earth typically saves this kind of thing on its own, but if it crashes like it did for me, um, your chances are you're going to lose your information. So make sure that you are saving uh, on a regular basis, as always. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to Baltimore. We'll zoom in a bit, and we'll keep going with the theme here of sports. I'm going to zoom in. Notice all these little icons that are popping up. It's kind of annoying, and that's because my layers um, are back to sort of the default, which means that several of them are turned on. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off places and photos. I'll keep three buildings on so I get a nice view of my SketchUp made M&T Stadium. So what I'm going to do here is make sure that I have my JHU Tour demo highlighted, and I'm going to press the place mark button, which is like a thumbtack. And when I do that, I can move the thumbtack around wherever I want, and I can change that icon if I choose by clicking that little thumbtack, and I can make it whatever I want to make it. And let's see, is there anything relevant here that would work for us? Uh, there probably is, but I'm not seeing it, so I'll just go ahead and pick this information. And then it's just a matter of typing here in the description here. So let's say, heading one, home of the world world champs and I'll end that heading tag with a forward slash then I'm gonna have a paragraph and say this is where and I'll make the word Ravens bold play their home games and I'll end that paragraph tag. I want to point something out. Even if I skip a bunch of spaces in the description and I have a new paragraph and I say something like Ray Lewis played many games here and I close out that paragraph tag and press OK. Let's see how we're doing so far. I've got Home of the World Champs as my heading. I've got this is where the Ravens play their home games, and Ray Lewis played many games here. It doesn't matter how many spaces I left in the description. What matters is I had a paragraph tag, so one space was left in between these two paragraphs. And I strategically forgot to put in the end of the bold tag. So what happens is everything after that initial bold tag got bolded. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick. And I'll go back into Properties, and if I put the end tag after the word Ravens and press OK. Now it's just the word Ravens that's in bold. So here's what we're going to do is you're going to make five place marks. And the theme of these place marks can be anything you want. It could be landmarks in Baltimore, it could be colleges, it could be something thematic based on a unit that you're doing, whether that could be any pretty much any subject. But make five place marks. Each one should have a heading tag, a bold tag, an underline tag a hyperlink, and it should have paragraph tags to sort of separate the various sentences. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you pause the video now, make your five place marks, and then come back and I'll show you how to take those five place marks and string them together into a single tour. So I've created three quick place marks just to make an example for you. They don't have the information that yours will have. Uh, but 
you remember back in the Aeneid example I showed you, there were actually lines connecting the various places, and that made a lot of sense for the Aeneid because it was actually a journey with um, steps in certain in a certain order. Your tour might not need those kind of lines because it might not make any sense or make any difference if you go from one place to another. Um, if it does and you like to add those lines, it's up here and it's called add a path. So I'm going to make sure that I am in my folder here. And I'm going to add a path. Now what I do is I take this cursor and I click on the first place, click on the second place, and I could actually keep going if I wanted to, but just connect two places. And I could call this I'll call this one purple to orange. Style and color would be the color of the actual line itself. And width would be how thick that line was. Um, you probably want to make it a little bit thicker if you want it to be want it to be seen better. I could press OK. Now that little thing here actually has a. I could actually move that into various spots wherever I wanted it to. But like I said, that might not make any sense for your particular tour. What is more important is that we're actually going to record a small video of your tour. And we're going to do that using this camcorder button up here. So I'm going to press record a tour. And I get this little dialog box at the bottom here. And once I press the record button, it is going to record everything I do on screen like I'm actually doing right now. So I'm actually going to be recording a recording. Uh, when, I'm not sure how well that's going to work, but we'll give it a shot. So I'm going to press the record button. We're recording now. If I wanted to, I could have a voiceover by clicking the microphone. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot to the Inner Harbor. So I was right. My whole system ended up crashing. I couldn't record in Google Earth while I was recording the screen. Um, it was just too much for the computer to handle. But take my word for it, when you press that record button, everything you do will be recorded. That means that when you zoom in, you're going to see that. If you're flying around, you're going to see that. So this is a little recording I made, and everything I did was recorded. So for your tour, you're going to want to zoom into each place mark. You're going to want to navigate around. And make sure you click on the blue hyperlink text so the people watching the video can read what you put in the, in the place mark. Once you're done, it's going to give you a little preview. If you like what you see, you just go ahead and save it. And you'll turn in the video to me, um, and that'll be the proof that you did the assignment. So I hope this has been informative. I hope you have a good time doing the assignment, and I look forward to seeing what you make.